Live from the 2024 Pennsylvania Farm Show, this is CBS 21 News at 5, sponsored by PA Pork Producers. We, we lost everything. From the rubble to resilience, the Burden Hand Inn is back open after a deadly explosion leveled the family business. You're looking at that here. We'll tell you how the one life lost still lives on within the walls still standing. We certainly have severe weather to talk about, spanning across the country, creating dangerous conditions like the ones you're looking at here. This is the aftermath of tornadoes in Florida. Storm impacts being felt by people up and down the East Coast. And how about that same system making today a CBS 21 Weather Watch Day? Soaking rain, whipping winds, you name it, we got it. And our crews are braving the elements to show you the rising water in Harrisburg as well. Tonight we have team coverage for you, preparing you for whatever might happen, whatever Mother Nature has in store. Chief Meteorologist Tom Russell inside the Farm Show Complex has your forecast. Ed Russo outside braving the elements, telling you about some potential flooding happening here as well. And yes, we are here at the Farm Show again. So happy to be back with you again, where agriculture meets fun in every corner of the complex. We're finding the best highlights for you every day long, and it's the highlights of PA culture and so much more. We are part of that, you're part of that, and the food is part of that. We love it here, getting a taste of the food, the best that Pennsylvania has to offer. And uh, just a taste of what's happening right there, the dinner rush just kind of beginning, the line's not too long. Maybe the weather keeping some people away. Could be a day, good day to be here. Thanks for being here with us. I'm Joel D. Smith. I'm hunkered down here at the anchor desk today. Jasmine is out and about. We'll see her very soon. The people behind us, we appreciate all of you being here as well. But the man of the hour has got to be Chief Meteorologist Tom Russell telling us just how bad it is outside and maybe where you live also. Tom. Yeah, here's the deal. We talked about it yesterday, how nasty this storm was going to be. Uh, multiple elements here dealing with the rain, now the wind, and then the cold that we had this morning. A lot of folks actually had winter precipitation. State College got four inches of snow. Let's start with the radar here, and you'll see we kind of get a little bit of a break moving in from the south. So when I say break, a little not, uh, a little less heavy as far as the rainfall goes, but there's another wave back behind that. So bottom line, more heavy rain on the way tonight. So our watches and warnings remain in place. We still have the flood watch for the uh, entire area shaded in green, then wind advisories. Winds are going to be the next thing to be concerned about. Winds at 30 to 40 miles per hour as we go through the evening hours. So here's what you need to worry about. Here's what you need to know. Rain ends late tonight, 9, 10 o'clock. It'll start to taper off. Flooding continues, that residual flooding. And then damaging winds, 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts. And yes, still windy tomorrow. We're going to see 20 to 30 mile per hour winds tomorrow, only they'll be out of the west instead of the southeast. So with that heavy rain, you know how it is all around the Farm Show Complex, Cameron Street. The Paxton Creek literally runs right behind us. So we sent meteorologist Ed Russo there. He's right along the creek, and uh, he's watching this thing rise. Ed, you were showing me a foot and a half, two-foot rise in the last couple of hours, right? Yeah, Tom, and it, it continues to rise. And we're on the west side of the complex, as you were saying, the part of the complex that parallels Paxton Street, and if you look behind me, you can't really see where the ground meets the creek because the top of the water is now starting to get, it's over the berm, and now it's in this grassy area, which is really starting to pond up, and it's also getting along the uh, road here, which is parallel to the creek that people park along, and on the intercom of the Farm Show Complex, there's a voice that's actually telling people to get their vehicles off of this road because Paxton Creek of course, continues to rise. And there also, there's also a bunch of workers now that are uh, actually picking up the cones that were along the street and taking them away because the water level continues to rise in this location. And what's crazy is, you know, the heaviest rain hasn't even really arrived yet. So we have that. And all of that rain is going to be going into Paxton Creek. So it's probably going to continue to rise even over the road, possibly even into the parking lot. So that is the concern here. The winds aren't too bad at my location yet, but definitely the heavy rain picking up and obviously uh, the minor flooding that we're starting to see at the farm show complex immediately adjacent to uh, the uh, Paxton Creek. And, and two miles upstream, the water has actually been rising two feet this afternoon. And of course that rise is gonna continue as we go through the rest of the evening. Live at the Farm Show Complex in Harrisburg, meteorologist Ed Russo reporting. Jasmine, over to you. 
I'll take it right now, Ed. So thanks for being out there and showing us exactly what is going on. We have an update for you tonight in the case of a man who was buying and selling stolen body parts. Jeremy Pauley has pleaded guilty in Cumberland County to charges of abuse of a corpse. He was also accused of receiving stolen property. Those charges were eventually dismissed. So we've been telling you about him since August of 2022 when he was arrested for buying those stolen body parts. He's been con connected to a multi-state body part ring as well. And Pauly pleaded guilty to the federal charges back in September. He's now scheduled to be sentenced on these local charges coming up in March. The York County coroner has released the names of the victims from the fire in West Mannheim Township yesterday, saying four-year-old Chase Butcher and 79-year-old Ronald Richard were both killed. The coroner says the four-year-old died of smoke inhalation, and this was a scene on Marburg Road yesterday. Officials say the fire started when Richard who had an oxygen tank, smoked a cigarette near the tanks, all in his garage. Rising from the ashes, one Lancaster County family, a family run in, is now open again. And this is less than a month after the fatal fire. So CBS 21's Elise Person had a chance to talk to the general manager about how they were able to get everything up and going so quickly and some of the feelings behind all this as well. Elise. The general manager here at the Bird and Hand family and says it was through hard work and dedication to get back up and running after a devastating fire caused them to nearly lose everything. It has been absolutely amazing the way that everybody came together, worked together. Less than a month after a propane explosion at the Bird and Hand family inn, the Lancaster County destination is back open and accepting guests. The first few days were a matter of just trying to figure out, okay, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? It's been a long road, but I'll tell you, everyone has come together and just worked together so fantastically. The Family Inn is operating out of the back pool building, which has a total of 90 rooms and suites after the front of the building was leveled. Our housekeeper is in a supply <laughs> closet downstairs. Our front office manager is in a storage room back there. Um, but you know what? It's it is what it is, and we have to do what we have to do. The explosion took the life of longtime employee Michelle Miller, but the inn's general manager says they keep her close to their hearts. If you look above the front desk, you see um, what looks like angel wings, and one of our reservationists made that in honor of Shell. The manager says she considers the staff family, and together they look towards the future of the Bird in Hand family inn. We call it our our temporary normal. We don't want to use the word new normal because it's not going to be a new normal. It's temporary. And the first night back open and operational, the inn has 88 of 90 rooms booked. And as for the front building lost in the fire, I'm told excavation is set to begin next week. In Lancaster County, Elise Person, CBS 21 News. Thanks a lot, Elise. So CBS 21, we are your farm show station. We're here all week. We're broadcasting live. You see us with a Beautiful shot from above right there. Skyview 21 flying over the complex where there's something new for everyone. Jasmine Brooks, it is her turn tonight to find those new and exciting things or maybe the traditional stuff that we love. Jasmine, tell us about it. I'll tell you about it. I am a professional goat snuggler right now. 87 goats inside this uh, Stein Metz family farm. I'm with a family right now from Mechanicsburg. What's your name? Melissa. Melissa. So why did you decide to bring your kids and just relax for the day here? Why not? You I know. know. What? You never really get the opportunity to do something like this. <laughs> it's wonderful. And I'll tell you, some people spend the whole, the whole day here. Absolutely. How long have you been here? About a half an hour, I'd say. Are you having fun, guys? Yeah. Are you having fun? Yeah. Oh, isn't he sweet? Look at him. Okay, so we're going to meet Justin. Justin is called the Goat Father, and for good reason. Uh, what do we need to know about goats? Well, that you don't already know that you love them, but... <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Hey, settle down goats, there. Goats jump, they play, they love, they snuggle. Okay, so. can I pick one up? Can I just grab one, or what, how does this work? Okay, here, listen, Justin. You t you hold the mic and you tell us about goats. Sure. And I'm going to hold the goat. Go ahead, tell us about goats. All right, we are here at the Pennsylvania Farm Show in Harrisburg. This is our second year here with the baby goats. We have 87 baby goats to Lindy. snuggle. That yes. is Lindy. So you're from Berks County, and you actually... You live stream this because people are really interested in learning about them. Absolutely. We, we live stream every day and show everybody the goats and do some informative I'm stuff. I'm going to ask you, do you have a favorite? Yes. Her name is Hope. Oh my gosh. Where is she? 
We're never going to be able to find her. But Hope has a really good story because Hope was born... Breach. Absolutely. So you know the story of Hope, yes. And what did you do to save her life? Goat CPR. Goat CPR. You saved her life and... and, and now, how is she living? Her best life? Her best life. She had over 100 people show up to her first year birthday party on the farm. That's insane. Okay, you're located in the main in the main hall. Yes, where the butter sculpture's at. So main hall, Artisan Alley, 87 baby goats, five bucks will get you in here. You can snuggle as long as you want from sun up till sundown. And they even provide the brushes to do it, Joel D. Smith. I'm telling you, people stay here all day. I see that. And you did a great job of holding that on the air a little bit better than you did holding your own child last year. So I think you've learned and been trained very well. Thank you very much, Jasmine. We'll see you later on. Moving on to this, you know, there's no, uh, you know, some animals couldn't be here, the poultry this year. And the Lancaster Dairy Farm was also recently raided by the PA Department of Agriculture's Bureau of Food Safety. you got to keep things as safe as possible. And the search was part of an active investigation into two foodborne illnesses cases in Michigan and New York. So they're trying to be safe here. According to an affidavit, the farm is accused of selling raw eggnog and other milk products that officials say got two kids sick with E. coli. This isn't the first time this Miller's farm has been investigated. Back in 2016, the CDC linked an outbreak of listeria to Miller's dairy products, which killed one person and hospitalized another. So we're still talking about that bad weather, and it's actually to blame for at least one crash so far. We'll tell you about that coming up. How maybe the driver lost control. We're getting some details we want to share with you about all that damage, too. And if you're hitting the rainy roads, we have your full traffic report coming up when we are meeting you here live from the PA Farm Show. Here's a look at the area roadways from the Hackman Smart Roof Traffic Alert Center. Yeah, with the rain, you got to be careful on the roads tonight. Things are moving slow in the Capitol Beltway right now. It's actually a crash slowing things down on Interstate 81 going north. That's near the Newville exit. And in York County, a crash on 83 has the shoulder closed right now. That is going north near the Newburytown exit. And that is what we're looking at right now. Close look at your CBS 21 traffic report. I also want to tell you about this, a rollover crash that was caused by weather, we believe, and we have the images to show you right here. The SUV crashed on Wagoner's Gap Road. Police tell us this was because the driver was trying to navigate the bend, then lost control in that icy slush mix you see off to the side, maybe coming off of the hill. Officials say the car spun around, crashed into the embankment, causing the rollover. Fortunately, no one was hurt. The judges are deliberating who has the best whoopie pie in the state of Pennsylvania for $500. We're about to find out. And one of the best things about the farm show are the free samples. How about chocolate milk? I'm here with Shane. Shane, tell me about what we got here. Yeah, uh, we're from the Lehigh Valley region. We're representing Lehigh Valley, uh, Dean Foods in Sharpsville and Swiss Premium. We're out of... Uh, like I said, Lehigh Valley, and we're just bringing our True Moon brand here. And everybody can sample it any time, right? Absolutely. And this is PA Farm Milk, too. Ooh, so this is very local good. milk, local farmers, local sourced out of, like I said, Lehigh Valley, Valley Swiss Premium. <laughs> Love what you do. Come on by for some free The 2024 Pennsylvania Farm Show, sponsored by PA Pork Producers. It is day four of the 108th PA Farm Show. You'll always find something interesting to do here. So we're going to send it out to Little Miss Interesting, also known as Jasmine Brooks. What do you have, Miss Interesting? I hear it's tasty. Yes, so here's the deal. Whoopie pies, yum, 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 yum. There is a huge contest. We're talking 24 whoopie pies. They've already been tried. Uh, we have a whole audience here, and these are the judges. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So what were you looking for when judging a whoopie pie contest? Well, these girls over here are supposed to be the professionals, so I was looking for unique and good. Okay, perfect. Let's walk on over. What What are you looking for in a whoopie pie when judging? Uh, overall, I wanted to taste good. The texture needs to be light and fluffy and a nice creamy icing in there. Was it hard for you to decide? It was a challenge between a few of them. Whether it was really going to pair. All right, and Mark over here, what were you looking for when judging the perfect whoopie pie? Uh, looking for the texture, 
seeing how it was the texture of the outside part and the cream, the flavor. Okay, wonderful. So we have over here, I'm gonna actually go the long way if you don't mind, I'm so sorry. Come on, follow me over here. So here are some of the whoopie pies as you can see. Uh, you know, you have like the chocolate, the red velvet, the original. Uh, and so there's many different ways you can make a whoopie pie. If I were to make it, you wouldn't need it. Um, do we have the winner yet? Uh, it's coming right now. Give us one minute. Okay, and so what does the first place winner take home tonight? They're going to take home $500. Wow, and so how does this, how many people enter normally and how does this whoopie pie contest usually do? Yeah, so I think we had about 24 entries um, and it's usually a big hit. A lot of people come out. Are they still working on the winner? They're going to write it down. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Oh, this is so perfect. Okay, here we go. We're going to go five to one, all right? So, n yep, so number five is Amy Pop from Dauphin County. All right, Amy! Number four is going to be, oh, wait a minute, okay. Amy's coming. Well, I know how live TV works, folks. So you're going to have to go online to figure out who won the best whoopie pie in Pennsylvania. I'm sorry, but Amy is number five. She's collecting her prize right now. And if you ever need someone to bake you something, maybe she'd be open to it. I don't know. All right, back to you. <laughs> Jasmine, this is simple. You tell us who won next time we see you. We, don't, we won't still be with the whoopie pies, but you will have the information. we got to find this it. out. So you thank you very it. much. Okay, right. thank you. Sure. All right. Sure. From whoopie pies to uh, something not to cheer for, how about our weather right now? we got to figure out what's going to happen out there. Let's head over to Chief Meteorologist Tom Ross. And now, CBS 21 News First Warning Weather with Chief Meteorologist Tom Russell. Yeah, so yesterday we told you it was going to be a nasty day, and boy, we got it all today. We got the flooding going on. We had the winds picking up. It is just going to be an ugly night. So keep that in mind if you have to get out and about. We've got the flood watching effect. That's for all the areas shaded in the green. And then we also have underneath that a wind advisory. So the winds are really starting to pick up first out of the southeast, and then they'll be out of the west tomorrow. Let's talk about what it looks like on the radar right now, and you'll see that as the uh, storm is pretty large, we're getting this little bit of a break here between the the intense rainfall, but a whole nother wave is on the way. Let's widen things out and you'll see because we've had a lot of severe weather down to the south. They had tornadoes push through Panama City, Florida. Now that severe weather is moving through the Carolinas and Virginia, but notice how large that system is. So tonight, the heavy rain continues. Some of the heaviest we've seen still to come tonight. This will start to taper off after 9 o'clock tonight. By 11 o'clock or so, it should be out of here. And then the winds pick up. So remember, this whole thing is winding up. That's going to bring us big winds wind conditions through tomorrow. 40, 50 mile per hour gusts. These are future wind gusts through tonight. You see 40, 52 in York. And then as we work our way through tomorrow, still in that 20 to 30 mile per hour range. And then it'll finally die down as we head towards Thursday. So it's going to be a pretty rough night. Rain finally ending again late tonight. Becomes very windy. 40 for the overnight low. Up to 40 mile per hour wind gusts. So we're still windy tomorrow. 44. Still a bit breezy Thursday. But guess what? A whole other system going to do basically the same thing Friday night into Saturday. So a soggy start to the weekend and very windy. But the difference with this is on the back side, it gets much, much colder. Take a look. It's 32. That's the high temperature on Sunday. That is some cold stuff. 30s into next week. Maybe a little bit of snow flurry activity on Monday into Tuesday. So this is going to be a cold stretch as we head toward the middle of the month. But Joe, Joe D, the immediate threat here, we've got flooded roads as the sun goes down. Yeah. You don't know what you're driving through. So please, we always say turn around, don't drown, be very careful. Let's put this in perspective. If all of this was snow... Oh, well, we're looking at about 15 to maybe 18 inches of yeah. snow. Okay. I mean, so, it's that much rain. Right. I mean, the rain's annoying, the flooding yeah, you gotta watch yeah, yeah, out yeah. for, but it could have been crazy. There you go. All right, we're talking about the circle of life taking on a, a new stage here, center stage right uh, here at the well, Farm Show Well, instead of center, maybe corner. All right. The Calvin Corner. The Calvin Corner. Calvin. We're telling you all about this. Uh, the biggest bundles of joy you can possibly see are entering the world right here. in one corner of the complex. The fan favorite stop at the Farm Show returns with new life. It's the calving corner. Have you been there yet? This place is amazing. It's so it gives cool, people cool. the chance to actually witness birth 
Yeah, birth of those cows, the baby ones are coming out. And as of this morning, the calving corner showcased six of their newborn calves, and they're anticipating maybe Aww. more births even today. The exhibit features pregnant cows from four different PA dairy farms. People even have the opportunity to vote on the names. Ah. You get to name the newborns. We also have an option for text alerts, and so you can get a text alert that would say, oh, Claire is in active labor. So if you're here in the complex, but you're not here at the calving corner, then you can come down and watch, or you can tune in online. Yeah, you got to sign up for those, but that's yep. a good idea. So there's also interactive trivia there. They have all kinds of good stuff happening. And keep that in mind. Those are the games for families just to learn more about dairy facts, all kinds of the food, the stuff that we're actually eating here, too. They have the full schedule of interactive STEM activities throughout the week. So a lot of fun going on here. Look at that. I want to go see this. Listen, they have a risers there and mm -hmm. stands right. like it's an event. <laughs> You're cheering like them it's on. It's an event. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Very cool. Very all right. Cool. So let's get to the butter sculpture. You know, that is one of the highlights here as well oh, yeah, and it's a tradition it. every year the artist creates something special that you always remember and it's usually got a PA theme to it all right let's take a picture or uh, look at some pictures from the sculptures over the years so they generally have the theme you know sometimes it's more like superheroes like you see there or the family or coming together as one very cool stuff okay yep that was good and we we've had some uh, sporting folks from the past as oh, well that's gritty. Yeah, Steely yeah, yeah. McBeam is there you got yeah. gritty you the, have a uh, swoop from the Eagles this was uh, 20 2020, yep. Gritty, the Flyers mascot, yeah. Eagle, the Swoop, and Steely McBean. So yeah, very cool. I thought that was just a big stick of butter. He told me. It's actually a bean. <laughs> it's actually a Steelers bean. But there that works go. for him either I way. Like it. I All like it. right. Jasmine, what's up? Okay, so the number one spot for the best whoopie pie in all of the state of Pennsylvania goes to Deb Martin Burkowski with her pumpkin whoopie pie with a cheesecake filling. And yes, everyone, it is her birthday. Live from the 2024 Pennsylvania Farm Show, this is CBS 21 News at 530, sponsored by PA Pork Producers. Oh, come on, rain, rain, go away. What are we doing here? It's a lot of it out there, and we are tracking it for you. A soggy Harrisburg night is what we're checking out. But things looking pretty gray all day throughout the region. Bad weather just hanging around. It is a weather watch day as we're keeping an eye on some potential flooding because we're getting a lot of what hey good day to be a duck i'll tell you that for sure it is 5 30 here at the pa farm show we are enjoying our time here as well uh, but when it comes down to it we want to know more about what's actually happening out there with the flooding and the potential for some dangerous situations chief meteorologist tom russell has that for you yeah, most areas now, uh, Jody, already seeing about an inch of rain. So remember, on top of that, we're already melting all that snow from over the weekend. So everything has already been saturated. Now we're throwing another one or two inches on top of that, and that's the big concern. So we had this fairly strong wave come through early today. We had this little bit of a break, and now there's a whole other wave of rain coming up from the south. And not just rain, the possibility of some severe weather as well. So as you take a look, we're still under that flood watch. That's that blanket flood watch for all the counties shaded in green. In addition, wind advisory because that's our next concern. Winds are already kicking at 20, 25 miles per hour. You put the saturated ground with the winds, trees could topple over, and that means we have the possibility a moderate risk now of power outages tonight. Some wind gusts 40 to possibly 50 miles per hour. Rain continues this evening. It'll taper off late tonight, and we're very windy through tomorrow. So the flood threat continues even as the rain tapers off, and then the power outage uh, possibility continues as well. So it's a pretty ugly scenario here tonight and into tomorrow. So with that, we have meteorologist Ed Russo, who's watching closely, not far from here, right along the Paxton Creek. And Ed, you were showing me last hour, maybe 45 minutes ago, how it's already all the way over its banks in some spots. Yeah, that's right, Tom. I want you to check out behind me because you see that flood zone sign? This is an area that floods pretty easily when you get a heavy rain event, again, in the west side of the Farm Show Complex, uh, right along the Paxton Street. So a half hour ago, there was grass you could see right in front of that flood zone sign, and now it's gone. This is not a puddle here. That's Paxton, that's Paxton Creek, okay? Now it's definitely over the, over the berm. It's, it's over the grass. 
and where I'm standing, I'm on dry ground, but the, the street is literally at my feet, a couple feet that way. So in a matter of time, especially since we still have a lot of heavy rain to get through, I expect the Paxton Creek to be over the roadway and they've been doing a pretty good job of announcing over the loudspeaker that people need to no longer park along Paxton Creek. And we're gonna pan towards, I guess that direction, um, Emily, if you wanna pan that way, there were cars bumper to bumper parked in that direction and now they're all gone because they've come by asking people to move all of their vehicles. So the water continues to rise throughout the afternoon. We've seen a two and a half foot rise at Paxton Creek, two and a half miles upstream. So with the heavier rain and combined snow melt, we're gonna continue to see that, that creek rise. And again, this is not a puddle that's in front of me, that's actually Paxton Creek. And in a half an hour, we're probably gonna have to move down a little bit as well. So wind is also picking up. So overall conditions are continuing to go downhill. Live from the Farm Show Complex in Harrisburg, CBS 21 meteorologist Ed Russo. Joel D, back to you. Hey, it looks rough out there. We appreciate you showing us what is going on and we'll check in with you a little later. All right, let's get on to some stuff inside where it's a little bit safer, a little bit nicer, but people are fighting to get from outside in here to see what's happening. And Jasmine is out and about showing us some of the best things today. What did you find next, Jasmine? I'll tell you, let's talk about Farm Show Fashion, okay? Because there's a whole boutique here, and it's not the only one that has amazing stuff that I would totally wear every day. All right, I'm here with my new friends. What's your name? Kimberly. Jaden. Okay, where are you guys from? Gettysburg. And have you ever thought about Farm Show Fashion? Like, does it matter to you what you wear to the Farm Show? Exactly, but I mean, I definitely like put on my flares today and everything. If I had my boots, I would have put them on. Came right after school, though. Oh, I love that. And what did you eat today? We have to ask. I haven't really had much today from here, but yeah. what did we have? Uh, we had a milkshake, a lemonade. some yeah. lemonade. We just got some cotton candy. We haven't tried that I yet, but it. here's maple cotton candy. And you bought some cows. We did. There were yeah. donations. Ten dollars. You got a cow. There was like multiple colors. I love it. Well, girls, have so much fun. Thanks for hanging out with me. Yeah, thank you. All right, so Brittany, I met you yesterday and I'm like, I want this, this, this. How much is that? I want that. I want... This stuff is so nice. Show me some of the favorite things you have in your boutique, which is called what, by the way? Uh, my boutique's called Grace Plus Grit Boutique. And where are you located? Uh, Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. I love that. Okay, so show us the jeans. All right, these are the Miss Me jeans. We carry them. We carry Judy Blue. Uh, we have the new viral Wrangler bags and the real cute Aztec jackets. I want to go over here really quick because we only have 30 seconds, but I love, this is like some of my favorite stuff. So these really, really, really soft, snuggly sweaters, and also you have the cutest little shoes. So what's the reaction been like here? Because the prices are good, but you don't really think about shopping necessarily at the farm show. Um, it's been really good. Um, and last year was a phenomenal year here for us. This year with the weather, it's been off and on, but oh. We're still doing good and we're happy with the results. All right. Can I try on a hat really quick? Joel D oh, did yesterday. Cool. I don't think he really pulled it off, yeah. but I think I can. What do you think, Joel D? Yes, it looks great on you. Huh? Huh? Everybody here says you can't pull it off either, so keep trying, maybe. No, it looks fine. It looks nice. Mm. You pull everything off, Jasmine. Oh, Thank you very started. much. I can't hear you. We'll see you next time. Right. Blah, blah. Bye. Bye. An Elizabethtown man has been sentenced to 18 to 36 years in prison after they found child porn on his work computer. Here's what happened. The Lancaster County DA's office says that Philip Miller was previously convicted in 2008 on child porn charges, and that was before. Now these are new ones. Authorities say their investigation started after a co-worker reported seeing questionable searches by Miller. So just six months ago, our community was rocked by a tragic shooting that killed Pennsylvania State Trooper Jacques Rougeau and seriously injured Lieutenant James Wagner. Although Wagner has been recovering, he is an example of an alarming growth in violence against law enforcement. And it's not just happening in Pennsylvania. There's some new data out there that shows more police officers were shot in the line of duty in 2023 than ever before. So they're looking at this data right now. And Janae Bowens explains why this is happening, maybe, and possibly what could be done to change, to change the tide. I don't know how to live without you, and I didn't ever want to imagine it. It's been four months since Brittany Lindsay lost her fiancé, Deputy Ryan Klinkenbrumer of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. He died just four days after they got engaged. I'm so happy I was able to love him. 
He was ambushed and murdered while he was sitting in a patrol car. The National Fraternal Order of Police say 2023 saw the highest number of officers shot, with 378 officers shot in the line of duty. 46 of them were killed, and there were also 115 ambush-style attacks. And that's very, very concerning because we're seeing cops getting attacked and shot simply for being cops. Sergeant Betsy Smith with the National Police Association says more light needs to be shined on the positive things officers do and departments need more funding and more officers. We are so short staffed, we don't necessarily have the time to attend the training that we need to keep police officers and ultimately the community safe. She says it's going to take a multi-pronged approach to stop officers like Klinkenbrumer from being killed in the line of duty. Now look down on all your brothers and sisters in blue. Keep them safe so this never happens to anyone else. Protect them and watch over them as they continue to serve their community. Now the National Fraternal Order of Police is calling on Congress to pass the Protect and Serve Act. Now this bill calls for the establishment of a new criminal offense for knowingly assaulting an officer and causing serious bodily harm or attempting to do so. In Washington, I'm Janae Bowens. New today, the Hershey Company has struck a deal with a global entertainment company working towards expanding their amusement parks to Asia. In a new announcement, Falcons Beyond Global will work with Hershey to bring their snacks and screams to Saudi Arabia and China with new Hershey-themed attractions and food experiences. Information about this will debut in an international location will be announced at a later date. Exciting stuff for Hershey. So once again, we're live at the PA Farm Show. Our political insiders are standing by. They're getting ready to talk about the news of the day, and that should be fun as well. We did not supply them with milkshakes so they can concentrate this time. We'll be back talking about that next. Here's a look at the area roadways from the Hackman Smart Roof Traffic Alert Center. We know the weather is not great out there, but so far, not too bad in terms of actual crashes, really slowing things down. You see a little bit of red there uh, getting across the river, but uh, really not a bad go right now. So let's keep it that way, a little bit slower out there. People, drive smart, you'll get where you need to go. That is a look at your CBS 21 traffic report. Uh, not as many folks out here at the farm show, but we know that Jasmine Brooks is very busy. What is she up yes. to? Okay, so a black walnut is the toughest nut to crack. Not Jasmine Brooks, did you know that? We have a live nut cracking demonstration going on. Whoa. All right, welcome back, everybody. I'm joined now by political insiders, Democratic strategist Tony Lepore, Republican strategist Charlie Giroux. Guys, I want to start with this. Um, we're talking about the potential for immunity, and it would be almost uh, undeniable and unlimited if, uh, if, if the reports are coming in as they are. The Trump folks say that a president has ultimate immunity. Uh, what would this mean? What are you taking out of this so far? Well, it's a good thing that Joe Biden has immunity. I'll <laughs> say that. He can't be <laughs> indicted while he's in office. We'll see what the Supreme Court says about this. The question is really whether it's self-executing or whether it's not a tough legal question, a little too complicated for a Tuesday. And maybe. We're going to go quick here, but we'll give you a shot oh, at this. Come on. I I, I think Trump is just trying to push this past November and deal with it then. I think the judge was not having it. Um, they asked if SEAL Team 6 came in and killed somebody, would uh, you be okay? And Trump's lawyer said yes. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I know we can't get into it too far right now, but ultimate immunity is the thing that they're talking about. We'll see how far they get. We'll keep you updated. Uh, the cancer revelation today, hearing about Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, his hospitalization, it lasted a long time. There's questions about whether the hierarchy was done there, the chain of command correctly. What are you taking out of what we're hearing? Well, I, I, my prayers go out to him and his family. That's number one. I, I think we all know that. Yep. I think he should have alerted the White House immediately. I don't think there's any question about that. I believe he did not. And I think we need to take a little closer look at it. And hopefully once he's 
up feeling okay, he can come before the Congress so, and explain what happened. Well, what's the fallout yeah, so then? I don't know where the questions are that you talk about. There aren't any questions here. He did not follow the law. He did not advise the folks down line from him at the Pentagon. He did not advise the President of the United States. Here's a man who was number two behind the Commander-in-Chief in our uh, chain of succession and order of command with American troops on the ground under fire. He's under general anesthesia and doesn't tell anybody. What's the punishment then? Well, if, <laughs> if Tony or I were president, I'm pretty sure we'd be calling him in and yeah. escorting him out At of the, the building. Least, yeah. I don't know whether he'll be okay. fired over this or not, but he should be. And we'll see when he feels better. Real short answer. How important will the Iowa caucuses turn out to be on the Republican side? Significant. What do you say? Oh, I think very significant. Okay, well, that would be very traditional if they go in that route. He, uh, how, how much does Trump need to win by to keep his momentum going? Because it's starting to shrink a little bit. He's going to win. The question is how close Nikki Haley gets yeah. and whether she can eclipse DeSantis. Which would be a bump to get to New it, Hampshire. It's a race for second, and Nikki Haley wants to go to New Hampshire in second place because she's growing fast in New yeah. Hampshire. Interesting. All right, thanks a lot, guys. You're dismissed. The food court is <laughs> that way, in case you didn't where, know. Where is it? And they already know. With me. <laughs> they all right Thank you, guys. We'll hear more from the insiders coming up in another Farm Show edition of Face the State. That is this weekend at 8.30 right here on CBS 21. And now, CBS 21 News First Warning Weather with Chief Meteorologist Tom Russell. All right, I heard it. Charlie Giroux's buying the next round of milkshakes. Yes, very good. All right, we got some nasty weather. We told you yesterday it was going to be an ugly day, and it continues to get worse. Some of the worst is still to come here this evening. Let's start with the overarching flood watch. That's all the areas shaded in green. Underneath that, we have a wind advisory. If you've noticed in the last two hours or so, winds are definitely picking up. Out of the southeast, we're anticipating gusts of 40 to even 50 miles per hour. We've already seen that in the western part of the state. Here's what our storm looks like like as it continues to evolve. We've got this little break in some of the heavier rain, but it is still steady rain. The heavy stuff is coming up from the south. This is a line of severe weather through Virginia, through the Carolinas, and that continues to work its way north. This whole thing continues to wind up and move off to the east. So let's play this out together. More heavy rain tonight, so that flood threat very real tonight into tomorrow. Even as the rain stops, we're going to be dealing with residual flooding. So rain should end about 10, 11 o'clock tonight. We'll have a chance to start to dry things out, but the storm itself is still winding up. That means nasty winds tonight, still very windy through the day tomorrow. Look at some of these future wind gusts, 44, 46, 44. And as we go through the day tomorrow, 20 to 30 mile per hour winds. Not a joke. As we get into tomorrow night, the winds will start to die down. In the meantime, if you don't have to go out tonight, stay put because that rain still continues, finally ending around 10, 11 o'clock tonight. Very windy. Temperature doesn't change much tonight. Windy and 44 tomorrow. So we do get a chance to dry out. It's still breezy, still mid-40s on Thursday. Guess what? We're going to do this all again Friday night into Saturday. Another round of some heavy rain here right as we start the weekend. The difference with this one is we turn very cold on the backside. It's going to be a windy and very wintry kind of feel as we push toward the second half of the weekend. Look at Sunday's high, only 32. Some snow showers on Monday into Tuesday next week. And notice our highs only in the 30s. Shildy, this is going to be a very cold cold stretch and I just talked to someone here uh, off the air with us. She wants snow. A lot of people want snow. So they see all this rain. They're like, oh, what if this was snow? I and know. this would be a big one if this was snow. It'd be legendary during a uh, PA Farm Show week. But it shows you just how serious stuff is now that even though you mentioned snow at the back of your forecast, today people are still talking about how much flooding, how's it going to be? Well, it's all that snowpack yep. has all that moisture in it. So it's really saturated. Definitely. All right. Jasmine, we miss you, but we know you're in good hands. Yeah. What are you up to right now? What's crack a Oh, well, I just met a fan. Hi, what's your name? Where are you from? Hi, Lisa Graham, Middletown, Pennsylvania. Well, it's very nice to meet you, Lisa. Huh? Nice to meet you. We think you're fantastic. Well, thank you so much. I think you're fantastic. I'm going to go find something else to do and bring it to all the people at home tonight. What do you think about that? I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Okay, good to meet you. You hey, too. don't go anywhere. I'm back at 6.08. Oh, this is our whole hit. See, I don't listen. They yell at me. Nope, you got to come back. We have a whole hit. I don't listen. I get in trouble all the time. All right, so you're from Middletown. So tell me a little about why you come to the farm show and what's your favorite thing to do here? Uh, we brought the grandchildren to the farm show oh. for the first time this year. How old are they and are they behaving? 
<laughs> one and a half and four <gasps> months old. Four months old! Yeah, so Hi. Hello, everybody! Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, now they're mad at you. That's Paisley. <laughs> and so what will you do, and especially what will you eat here at the farm show? We ate milkshakes, we had cheese cubes, and a little bit of wine afterwards. You had wine? We did. Oh my goodness. So I got this orange aid at the farm show, and I said, no vodka for me. And the lady was like, yeah, I hear that 20 times a day. Like, you're not funny, lady. You're not funny. But also, the livestock is pretty cool. Did you see the horses, the Clydesdale horses? They were gorgeous. So big. They're like dinosaurs. Yeah. yeah I know. Nice. It was wild. Do you ever see people you know here, like, run into your buddies? We did. And his buddies were a bunch of young friends who all had babies during COVID. Oh, well, there you go. COVID babies. All right. Well, yeah. hey, it was great to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right. Thank you. Hey, guys. All right. Can I send it back to you now? I'm sorry for not listening earlier. He was doing a selfie. So, yeah, we're just buying our time as well. Jasmine, thank you very much. And don't eat the apples behind you. That's really a display. <laughs> as okay. uh, this is tempting as that I'm allergic. Maybe. We'll see you soon, Jasmine. See ya. Okay, well, it shouldn't be as tempting for you. Thank you very much. All right, so when we come back, we're highlighting some of the local companies making a big difference in our communities. Some big checks being dished out as well, helping kids, Whoa. helping make a big impact for these locals. Yep. Welcome back to the PA Farm Show. We're yeah. enjoying our coverage out here. We want to it's talk fun. about some good stuff that's happening. There's some local businesses that are donating big time to try to help fight childhood cancer. So today, West Shore Home and Miter Brands gave $100,000 to the Four Diamonds Foundation in Hershey. Four Diamonds says their mission is to conquer childhood cancer by assisting families through their top health care and continued research. Penn State Health and specifically Four Diamonds is is just such a, a worthy place to invest it's it's got big vision and in our business a lot you know we talk about you know, you you dream it you set a goal and then get to work and and i think that four diamonds is a great example of that so the event included a tour of penn state hospital and a meeting with some four diamonds families as well Ad conditions continue to go down here, hill here along the Paxton Creek. The entrance, the McClay Street entrance to the Farm Show Complex now completely underwater. We've got a full update on this location. Live from the 2024 Pennsylvania Farm Show, this is CBS 21 News at 6, sponsored by PA Pork Producers. We have some important team coverage to tell you about. We are keeping an eye on what Mother Nature is doing outside. Chief Meteorologist Tom Russell has your forecast. Ed Russo is live outside in the elements dealing with all of that. It is dark out there, but believe me, he's out there somewhere watching the flood potential get worse and worse as we're going throughout the day. So things have been dreary. They've been gray all over central PA. York City already seeing some flooding on the roads this afternoon. Because of the flooding risk, we're declaring today a CBS 21 weather watch day, and things are certainly happening quickly. Yes, we're live at the farm show again, having a great time. We are dry inside. It is time for dinner, and the lines are getting a little bit longer, but not quite as long as they've been in the past. Oh, hello there. We're just going to walk around. Little bit, yeah. Get in line as fast as you can because it's bustling. Thanks for being here with us at six o'clock. I'm Joel D. Smith, making sure that you're going to have a good time here and showing you all the good stuff inside. But the rain is the big story. It's not good now, and it could be getting worse in terms of flooding potential. Uh, we go back to Tom right now to break down what's happening out there. Yeah, Joel D., you're exactly right because this is the worst part of it. Everything is now culminating from what we've seen all day long. All that heavy rain, one, two inches of rain. Now we're getting dark, so you can't see what you're driving through. That's an issue, and the winds are picking up as well. Here's what we got as far as the rain goes. It's not going to let up anytime soon. We're still dealing with this rain till about 10, 11 o'clock tonight, so that is part of our big concern. So we got a flood watch in place. That's that entire area of green. Now a wind advisory, so the winds are already picking up. If you've been outside over the last hour or two, you know what I'm talking about. The 
uh, winds are going to be still pretty nasty. Let's talk about where we go from here as we work our way into the nighttime hours. So we've got rain ending late tonight around 10, 11 o'clock. The flooding, the residual flooding continues into tomorrow. Damaging winds, 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts we've already seen on the western side of the state, and we're still windy through tomorrow. So add all this up together. We could see some power outages tonight. You could see some road closures, so keep that in mind, not only tonight, but for your morning commute as well. One of the areas that we're watching is just out back here along the Farm Show Complex. You know, the Paxton Creek, which often floods. Well, we're dealing with that right now, and meteorologist Ed Russo has been keeping a close eye on this. Ed, it looks like we've gone up about two feet just since this afternoon. Is that right? Yeah, it's interesting you brought that up, Tom. It's now three feet since 10 a.m. this morning. The Paxton, Street, the Paxton Creek has risen three feet, and we had to change locations from the last half hour because the creek was going up over the road that is the McClay Street entrance. And notice the water. You can see it kind of glistening in the light there. That is the McClay Street entrance. That's the roadway to the west side of the Farm Show Complex, now completely underwater. Uh, they are strongly discouraging anyone from coming in that entrance and driving parallel along the west western side of the complex. It's just crazy how fast this water has risen. I mean, when we got here an hour and a half ago, it was over the grass. Now it's completely over the road and it continues to rise. And portions of the parking lot on the west side of the complex are now flooded because the drain system is now backing up. But remember, this is one of those areas that floods the easiest. It is in a flood zone due to its proximity uh, to the Paxton Creek, which is now probably three or four times as wide as it was just an hour and a half ago. So that really gives you kind of an idea on how fast these floodwaters come up. But again, anytime you see flooded water like this, it's never something that you want to cross with your car because Sometimes the water looks calm on the surface, but there's still a fast flowing current beneath. And we still have probably one or two inches of rain to get through yet. So all of that water and the snow melt is just gonna continue to cause the Paxton Creek to rise. Live at the Farm Show Complex in Harrisburg, CBS 21 meteorologist Ed Russo reporting. Joel D, back to you. Thanks so much, Ed. We came in that way. We're going to have to find another way out. We're probably not the only ones here. So thanks for that illustration showing us what things are like outside. Stay safe. We have an update tonight in the case surrounding a man who was accused of buying and selling stolen body parts. Jeremy Pauly has pleaded guilty in Cumberland County to charges of abuse of a corpse. He is also accused of receiving stolen property. Those charges were dismissed. So we've been telling you about him since August of 2022 when he was arrested for buying stolen body parts. He has since been connected to a multi-state body part ring. Pauly pleaded guilty to the federal charges back in September. He is scheduled to be sentenced on these local charges coming up in March. The York County Cor Coroner has released the names of those victims from the fire yesterday in West Mannheim Township. That was a four-year-old named Chase Butcher, a 79-year-old named Ronald Richard. The coroner says the four-year-old died from smoke inhalation. This was the scene of the house yesterday on Marburg Road. Officials say the fire started when Richard, who had an oxygen tank, was smoking a cigarette in the garage. Well, they're trying to rise from the ashes. It's one Lancaster County family run in, and it's showing some amazing perseverance going through all this just a month after the fire and a huge explosion there. CBS 21's Elise Person spoke to the general manager about how they're trying to move on, but also remember someone still close to their heart. The general manager here at the Bird and Hand Family Inn says it was through hard work and dedication to get back up and running after a devastating fire caused them to nearly lose everything. It has been absolutely amazing the way that everybody came together, worked together. Less than a month after a propane explosion at the Bird and Hand Family Inn, the Lancaster County destination is back open and accepting guests. The first few days were a matter of just trying to figure out, okay, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? It's been a long road, but I'll tell you, everyone has come together and just worked together so fantastically. The Family Inn is operating out of the back pool building, which has a total of 90 rooms and suites after the front of the building was leveled. Our housekeeper is in a supply <laughs> closet downstairs. Our front office manager is in a storage room back there. Um, but you know what? It's 
it is what it is and we have to do what we have to do. The explosion took the life of longtime employee Michelle Miller, but the inn's general manager says they keep her close to their hearts. If you look above the front desk, you see um, what looks like angel wings and one of our reservationists made that in honor of Shell. The manager says she considers the staff family and together they look towards the future of the Bird in Hand family in. We call it our, our temporary normal and we don't want to use the word new normal because it's not going to be a new normal, it's temporary. And the first night back open and operational, the inn has 88 of 90 rooms booked. And as for the front building lost in the fire, I'm told excavation is set to begin next week. In Lancaster County, Elise Person, CBS 21 News. Thank you so much, Elise. So CBS 21, we are your farm show station, and all week long we are here live. There's a bird's eye view. Let's see if we can catch me waving here. Who knows? But anyway, Skyview 21, give us a nice view of what's happening around us. We need some more people around us. Come hang out. you got time. We're here till 6.30. Jasmine Brooks, she's not here. She's out and about, and oh, looks like she's uh, around some action in an arena. What's going on, Jasmine? We got the big horses behind us. And listen, when it comes to uh, going right down the middle, I brought you a Democrat and a Republican. We have our Democrat uh, from Pittsburgh, our Republican from Cumberland County. Hello, how are you? Good, good. And of course, tell everyone who you are. I'm State Representative Emily Kincaid. I represent Allegheny County. Uh, Senator Greg Rothman from Dolphin, Cumberland, Perry County. How do we know you? Because we cover that, of course. So what are you doing here today with the horses? Uh, we are about to race in the feed scurry. Uh, so it is up and around, and we got to pick up some barrels uh, or uh, some bales of hay and get back as quickly as possible. And you brought your friend. Yeah, this is my daughter. I'm the defending champion, so I won last year, so I'm here to defend my title. But, <laughs> okay. but I'm also rooting for Emily. Hey, don't go anywhere in case I need you. I'm going to try to get close to the horses, but obviously they're gigantic, so it might not go well. Sir, I know that you're busy, but can you just tell me about your horse? Uh, his name is Lynn. He's a great Pertron, and he's uh, located down in the equine barn this week. At home, we're in Danville, Pennsylvania. I'm from Mount Carmel. All right, we're pretty close. So, uh, how much does he weigh exactly, and how old? He weighs right around 1,800 pounds, and he's about 18 years old. And 18, no kidding. And and so, uh, how do you handle such a big animal, sir? Just lucky. If they knew how big they were, we couldn't control them. And how many of these do you have? I have four of them here. I have another one at home. And one more thing, what kind of uh, uh, horse is this again? He's a Percheron. Okay, and what's the difference between this and a Clydesdale? One's Percheron, one's a Clydesdale. Of course, I, that's what I was going to say. Okay, Danville, we'll see you later. You could tell I was like nervous in my voice. They are so big. Um, so this is going down. The reason I brought you in here is because I was all excited that there was um, stick horse races, like the wooden stick horse races, but it's not till 7.30, so you're going to have to settle for the real thing. Look at that horse. All right, back to you, Jolte. Very nice, and I think you are now ready to to host insiders because you had one from each side and you had them uh, agreeing on lots of stuff. That's fun, and I'll challenge you to a race you know with it, the stick horses you know another it. time. I know. Thanks a lot, Jasmine. All right, folks, uh, we were talking about the fun stuff, but we also got to talk about the serious stuff when it comes to this. Some dairy farm allegations coming in Lancaster County to tell you about why Miller's Organic Farm is being investigated by the State Food Safety Bureau. More on that when we return at the Farm Show. New tonight, Governor Josh Shapiro and OpenAI announcing a Commonwealth partnership. So it's the Office of Administration will lead a first-of-its-kind pilot program of chat GPT to help Commonwealth employees do their daily duties more efficiently, they say. So this is a program that they say the findings will determine how the administration uses AI in government moving forward. So the pilot is the Commonwealth's first-ever use of AI tools for state government employees and open AI's first ever agreement with a state entity. So ahead of the curve, we'll see what happens. A Lancaster Dairy Farm was recently raided by the PA Department of Agriculture's Bureau of Food Safety. So they're trying to do what's right here and find out what's really happening with this place. The search was part of an active investigation into two foodborne illness cases in Michigan and New York. So according to the affidavit, the farm is accused of selling raw eggnog and other milk products that officials say got two kids sick with E. coli. So this isn't the first time the Millers 
farm has been investigated back in 2016. The CDC linked an outbreak of listeria to Miller's dairy products, which actually killed one person and hospitalized another. All right, here at the farm show, you can find things to maybe spruce up your home. How about this beautiful outdoor table here? You can fit eight of your favorite family members around, or maybe you just want to take a load off and lounge in one of these ah, Adirondack chairs. And look at that. Is that a chicken coop? What is that? That's our deluxe chicken condo. <laughs> chicken condo. Very nice. I think they have chicken condo over at the food court. Hey, stay with us. Your first morning forecast is coming up. the farm show some more people showing up the folks behind me here say they're going to get some milkshakes very soon right my question for you do you have radon detectors in your homes <laughs> something to consider folks yes i gotta tell you about this 40 percent of homes in pa may be contaminated by that cancer causing gas we're talking about radon this according to the american lung association so radon that's that gas responsible for 21,000 lung cancer deaths each year decades of testing found two-fifths of pennsylvania homes had high levels of radon High levels have been found in deep in cities. High levels have been found in farmhouses. It doesn't matter. Test for radon. And hey, you can get those tests in most hardware sh stores. And if you think you've been impacted, you got to contact the Department of Environmental Protection. They have the resources for you. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is being treated for prostate cancer. So it's a new development after a few days of a mystery surrounding his hospitalization. We just talked about that with our insiders, right? Well, doctors at Walter Reed say actually it was his recent secretive trip to the hospital that was to treat a urinary tract infection. And a complication happened after the surgery, and that was to treat the cancer. So senior administration and defense officials were not told, though, for days of the 70-year-old's hospitalization or the cancer. The Secretary Austin has taken responsibility for the issues with transparency and the department is taking immediate steps to improve our notification procedures. Austin on the road to recovery, we're told, but it's unclear when he'll be released from the hospital or when that controversy may end. And now, CBS 21 News first warning weather with Chief Meteorologist Tom Russell. Oh, what an ugly, ugly Tuesday. Hope you're doing okay. We have the worst of the storm still to come tonight. Of course, just adding the nighttime element to things makes it a little more dangerous as you're driving. You don't know what you're driving through. So we always remind you, turn around, don't drown. But flooding is definitely one of the big uh, concerns here tonight. And even as the rain ends tonight, flooding threat continues on into tomorrow. So flood watch remains in effect. That's the green that you see here. And then notice the lighter green. Now we're seeing some of the individual creeks and streams reach or uh, exceed flood stage. So that's the next concern. Uh, also, we have a wind advisory. So all of this playing out here as we speak. Let's talk about where we go from here. We've got the storm unfolding as we speak. Heavy, more, more heavy rain coming up from Washington and from the Carolinas, which we've been dealing with severe weather. You see that line of storms right in there. The whole storm continues to wind up and strengthen, and that's why the winds are going to get so nasty. We've already felt some of those wind gusts as well. So let's play this out. Still heavy rain through through about 10 o'clock tonight. The rain will start to taper off as we head into the late evening hours, and that'll give us a little break. But notice the center of the storm still strengthening, still winding up. That means we're going to be windy through tomorrow. Notice the colder air that tries to get in the western part of the state. These are some of the current wind gusts coming out of the southeast. Look at that, at 21 miles per hour. Look at Erie at 32. So we're going to see those 30 and 40 mile per hour wind gusts uh, pretty prevalent through tomorrow. This is an example of some of the minor flooding. This is Swatera Creek near Hershey. We're on the rise, headed to over seven feet. Seven feet is flood state. So we're at three now, headed towards seven. This is going to happen, and residual flooding will continue into tomorrow and even Thursday. So rain finally ending. Very windy tonight. Some of these wind gusts in that 40, even 50 mile per hour range. Here's your seven day forecast. Tomorrow still another windy day, except this time the winds will be out of the west at 20 to 30 miles per hour. So windy day there. Still breezy, but quieter Thursday. Friday, increasing clouds. Rain comes 
comes in late in the day into the evening on Friday. You're looking at another soaking rain here right as we start the weekend. The difference with this storm, it's windy and it's really cold on the backside. Take a look. You're going to see those 30s there. So as we head into Sunday, how about 34? Some light snow shower activity on Monday, 34, and that continues on into Tuesday. So, Joel D., not just rainy, but cold winter is back this weekend. I know. You really feel it out there. And... I feel for people that are trying to come in here uh, right now because the, the the one area is all flooded out. And meteorologist said Russo has been showing you literally where we come in. Right. You can't pass through. It's no, flooded. We'll find another way out. Uh, we're trying to find out what Jasmine Brooks is up to. It's getting near dinner time, so uh -oh. I have some ideas. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really trying to figure out what I want for dinner. I don't know, but I, I did meet some cool girls. I just want to show you around like long lines right now. It's super duper busy. Uh, and so I'm just kind of figuring out what I want, but I saw this pizza that you don't typically see. It's peach pizza. Sarah, you uh, created this. Why? Uh, we work with, we try to fo uh, focus and feature local products. So we worked with Naus Foods, a local producer, to highlight the peach products from Adams County. Well, it looks amazing. Emma over here, you have a really cool story. So you uh, live on a family farm. It's been around for 120 years. What are your duties on the family farm? Um, we bale hay in the summer. In the winter, we butcher. We have our own butcher shop attached to our barn. Um, I help out through any of the seasons if we need help planning or doing anything with that. My dad also does with my grandfather. So you're in college, right? I so am. what are you going to school for? Um, I'm going for special education and early childhood education. When you have a farm in your family for a century, what kind of pressure does that put on you to keep it going? Um, it puts somewhat of pressure because I know like for my future family, I want my kids to be raised the way I was raised with responsibility and just a good work ethic, knowing that like you ought to keep the family going and it's something that is like a main branch in your family. Can I send my children to your farm? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'd have fun. Where are you located? <laughs> um, Nescapec, Pennsylvania. Okay, what county? Uh, Columbia. Very nice. All right, and over here, Rebecca, right? Oh, yes. And so you don't have a farm, but you'd like to with your family. Why is that important to you to have a farm? Um, I liked the way that I was raised and I admire the way that Emma was raised. So I would like my kids to be able to have that, that connection. Okay. You guys taught me so much. Thank you so much, Future Farmers of America. Now I know if I want my kids to listen, all I have to do is put them on a farm. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my kids on a farm. Jolte? <laughs> I'm not sure how legal that is, but we'll work on it. And uh, yeah, very good. Jasmine, thank you very much. We'll see thank you a little you. bit back here on the set. Yes, it's a good plan. Yeah, yeah good work. Yeah, yeah. Um, discipline comes in many different flavors. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. All right, there's a York based barber shop out there we really need to tell you about. They're going above and beyond when it's coming to serving those in need. Yeah, how they're not only cutting hair, but cutting folks some slack during these hard times. back and Jasmine's mm -hmm. back as well. Hey. I am back with a peach pie. Who peach wants pie. a bite? I'm going to make you guys try a bite then. Lemonade too, is there it? Uh, this is an orange drink, yeah, with sugar in it. Lots Ooh. of sugar. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get back to the news. It's a York-based barbershop called World of Cuts, and it's hosting its first ever free haircut day. Owners of the shop say that they've seen the need in their community, so they dedicated their services all day today to help out customers who could not afford the regular price of a haircut to give back, let the community know that, you know, we play a part and we're here to help out. So the shop has been operating in York for 28 years, even opening a barber school back in 2007. So after their first test run of this kind of event, the shop says they hope to continue putting on charitable events going forward. That's awesome. It is. World of cuts. All, All right, right. guys. We got some ugly weather here real quick, guys, to tell you about. Uh, flood watch continues. We got a wind advisory. So the rain will continue to about 10 o'clock tonight, then start to taper off. But the flood threat continues even after the rain wraps up. Also very windy, 30, 40. 40 mile per hour wind gusts. It's still going to be windy tomorrow as we try to dry things out. Next system is Friday night into Saturday. All right, who's taking a piece? Come on, take the a beach. bite. I'll take a bite. I'll oh, you right. will? Hey, did you find it to be as busy as usual or, or not so much? What do you um, think? The whole farm show or the, the food court? <laughs> you tell me. I don't know. I was plowing through people like a, like a plow on the farm. Excuse <laughs> me, i got to get to my wife's house. Right, <laughs> nice. uh, very 
Okay. okay. Very busy. Gotcha. Hopefully your kids weren't watching after that. Somebody's going to say, I got run over by an anchor today. All right, folks, we're having a blast here, and you know we are. We are your Farm Show Station. We'll be here with you all week long. Make sure you join us, 5, 5.30 and 6. Yes, good.